Hey book nerds, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do another one of my 2019 challenge type videos. Um, so these are my personal challenges that I'm setting myself for 2019. And this one is going to be the top 10 authors that I want to read in 2019. So these are authors that <laughs> I have multiples of their books on my um, TBR list. And I've basically never read a book by them. And I want to rectify that. So I did a whole spreadsheet thing to work out what to do for this video. And basically most of these, if not all of these, I have four or more books by that author on my TBR. If I don't have four or more, then I have all of their books on my TBR. <laughs> like if they've written three books, I have all three books on my TBR. Um, there was quite a lot of options for this actually, so it's also based off the ones that I'm most excited to read. There's a good mix of thriller authors on here, there's um, non-thriller authors on here. So I'm just going to go straight into it. So the first author is Patrick Ness. I've never read a Patrick Ness book. I tried to read um, A Monster Calls when I was about 12 maybe. And I just, I borrowed it from the library like three times and all three times I read maybe a few pages and then just stopped. But I want to rectify that in 2019. So the book I've chosen to do that is The Rest of Us Just Live There, Live Here. This is about a person, a normal person who lives in a world where like superheroes exist, I believe. I don't know if it's superheroes or just like fantasy type things, but it's just about a normal person living in that world. And I think that sounds really cool. Um, I chose this book mostly because I am really into superheroes and it was the premise that excited me the most out of all of Patrick Ness's books. Author number nine is Jane Corey, who is a thriller author. I don't know if she's well known in the in America, but I see a lot of her books in the UK. I think this is one of the ones where I have every single one of her books on my TBR and I haven't read any of them. But the one I've chosen um, to read for this challenge is Blood Sisters. So this is a thriller about three girls who, three little girls, went off to school and within an hour one of them was dead. Now the two ones who didn't die are adults. One of them was rendered mute by whatever happened and she's in an institution. Um, the other one has become an art teacher and then she seems fairly normal but then stuff starts happening in a classroom and then there is someone who is following both of those people keeping tabs on them presumably because they want revenge for whatever happened when they were children uh it sounds like a really interesting thriller premise it's got the highest ratings i think out of the ones of hers that i wanted to read and yeah i do like stories that have secrets to do with the past that you uncover in the present because that's my type of thriller Number eight is another thriller author, and that is Claire McIntosh. Um, again, I'm pretty sure I have every single one of her books on my TBR list, and the one I've chosen is I See You. So the blurb of this says that uh, Zoe Walker is on her way to work, and she sees a photo of herself in the sex worker ads, um, but everyone in her life just like dismisses it as someone who looks like her. And then someone who looks like her gets murdered on, I believe, the same train that she takes every morning. And she realises that she is possibly being followed by someone who wants to do her harm. Claire McIntosh's books all have really good reviews on Goodreads. And I think they have mixed reviews on Booktube. I know some people really like them. I know some people who don't really like them. I'm hoping I fall into the category of people who really like them, but... Yeah, it'd be nice to finally read some of her books. Next, we have another thriller author, and that is Lucy Whitehouse. This, I definitely have all of her books on my TBR. I have actually read one of her books, but I read it about six years ago when I first got my Kindle, and I have zero memory of it. I don't know if I enjoyed it or if I didn't enjoy it. Um, but the one I've chosen for this is uh, Keep You Close, and this is about a woman who her when they were she was best friends with this other person when they were kids and now uh, this other person has grown up and this person is a famous artist um her favorite her the famous artist threw herself to her death but our main character knows that when they were kids 
the artist friend was completely terrified of heights and would never go anywhere near heights. So, um, basically she's now trying to investigate what happened to her former friend who is this famous artist and she uncovers all these secrets to do with her life. It sounds good. I love, love, love thrillers that focus on intense female friendships. So I hope this has some kind of detail about when they were kids and when they were friends. Um, I like the idea of people trying to solve people's murders after they die. It's just got a lot of good thriller things going on in it. Author number five is quite a well-known one, but I don't know if he's still well-known, and that is James Herbert. I absolutely adore Stephen King, as you can tell from my massive Stephen King shelf. Um, my mum used to really love James Herbert. He's a horror writer, by the way, in case you don't know, um, which is why I'm bringing up Stephen King. But he was kind of like the counterpoint to Stephen King, I believe, at some point. Um, so my mum absolutely adored all his books, and I've never read a single James Herbert book, despite loving horror and despite hearing my mum talk about how much she loves him as a writer. So I've chosen to rectify that by reading The Survivor, which is about a plane crash. It was turned into a movie, which is quite famous, I believe, so you might know the movie. Um, but this is about a plane crash and only one person survives and they're trapped on this island and they basically just see ghosts of the dead all the time and are slowly going insane. This book is the one that my mum always talks about, which is why I've chosen it, because she said she was reading it when she lived alone, when she was my age, and she had to physically leave the house and go to like a supermarket to find people because she was so terrified of reading this book alone that she just needed to be around people. So I, my hopes are quite high for this, um, based off the stellar reviews from my mum, and hopefully I will find another horror author that I love. Author number six is Sean David Hutchinson, which I have a whopping five books by on my TBR and I haven't read a single one of them. Really great there. <laughs> but that's the point of this challenge is to actually read these books. Um, the one I've chosen is At the Edge of the Universe, which is about a teenage boy who... Um, he was best friends with another teenage boy and then they started to date and then one day his best friend slash boyfriend just vanishes and our main character discovers that absolutely no one else remembers this person existing apart from him and oh yeah I just think it's a really interesting premise I don't really know if it's like a sci-fi story or if it's a thriller story or I don't really know what it is um but I guess that'll be part of the fun of going into it and I'm really hoping I like it because like I said I have five books in total by Sean David Hutchinson on my TBR and they all sound great and I'll be really disappointed if it turns out I don't like his writing or something. The next author is Mary Kubica and again I have read a book by her. I think I read Pretty Baby. I don't really remember but I do remember that I did love it um, and I think I've got every other one of her books on my TBR. I'll probably reread Pretty Baby actually because I literally remember nothing about it. But the one I've chosen for this challenge is Every Last Lie and this is actually I think her lowest rated one on Goodreads but it's the one that appealed to me most in terms of premise which is why I picked it. Um, but this is about a woman whose husband dies in a car crash and they have their young daughter, he has their young daughter in the car with him but the young daughter manages to survive, her name's Maisie. Um, so our main character thinks that it's an accident and then Maisie starts saying things that imply maybe something bigger was at play and I know it's told in two perspectives so it's told from the present day with the main character trying to work out whether her husband's car accident was an accident or not and it's told in the past from her husband's point of view in the months leading up to the accident which sounds really cool I've mentioned before I like thrillers where the husband is actually a proper character and they're not just a random suspect who acts weirdly and then turns out not to be or does turn out to be the person behind everything so I like the idea of it being narrated from the husband's point of view um I know from past experience that I did really enjoy Mary Kubica once and I'm hoping I'll enjoy her again and yeah hopefully it'll be a really good thriller the next author Again, I have read one book by, and that is Neil Gaiman. I have read Stardust. I love Stardust. Love, love, love the movie. Love, love, love the book. They're basically the same. 
Um, but Neil Gaiman's books, I've got a lot on my TBR. And they're all very fantasy based. And the one I've actually chosen is massive, so I'm slightly concerned about reading it. But that is American Gods. I don't think I actually know anything about this. I think it's Norse mythology gods in the modern day, but I could be completely wrong about that. Um, yeah, there was a reason I chose this one. I don't remember what it was, unfortunately, but it sounds really cool. Um, it'll be a challenge, definitely, for me to read a massive fantasy book. And I really, really hope I enjoy it because... I love Stardust so much that I think I do like Neil Gaiman's writing. But maybe I should have picked a shorter one. Author number nine is another thriller author, and that is Howard Linsky. I have, again, I'm pretty sure all of his books on my TBR, and they're actually all of a series, but I decided to choose the one that appealed to me the most, so it's actually the third one in the series. I'm hoping, because it's a police procedural thriller series, that... They're not actually going to really rely on previous books and they're not going to spoil the previous books before I've read them. But it's a, it's a risk I'm willing to take. So the one I've chosen is The Search and this is about a child went missing in the past and someone was accused of it, this guy. But this guy is now dying, I believe he's got cancer or something. And he never ever told the truth about what really happened and now because he's dying he's stepped forward and he'll say that he'll tell the truth. But obviously the detective character is like, well, you're a serial killer and possibly a child killer. Are you really going to tell me the truth just because you're dying? I love the ambiguity aspect of it. I love the idea of an old serial killer passing on what really happened. Um, I've got a couple of books on my TBR with a similar premise where it's a serial killer who's like become an old person and I like that. Yeah, all of Howard Linsky's books sound intriguing. The first one actually sounds the least intriguing to me, which is why I've picked the third one. But hopefully I might have found a really good um, thriller police procedural series with any luck. The final author is Peter Swanson, and the book I've chosen is The Kind Worth Killing. So Peter Swanson's a thriller author, again, um, and I've heard a lot about him, particularly in the last year on Booktube. But The Kind Worth Killing is essentially like a strange is on the train type story where this businessman is on a flight and he meets this incredibly attractive young woman and he starts tell talking to her and he tells her about how he hates his wife and he thinks his wife's cheating on him and this attractive young woman is like, oh, I can help you with that. So they start to plan his wife's murder together. However, this attractive young woman has some dark secrets in her past that she is not telling him. I love the sound of this one because it sounds really intense. I still haven't actually read Strangers on a Train, which I intend to do at some point. Um, but that type of story, I like the idea of someone getting too deep in over their heads, particularly if it is a man who's gotten too deep into his head because he's attracted to a pretty woman. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to a really twisted, intense kind of cat and mouse type thriller which hopefully this will be so that is all of the authors that i am um, well it's not all the authors that i want to read in 2019 but that is the top 10 authors that i am aiming to read in 2019 along with the books that i've chosen from them to read like i said they've all got lots of books on my tbr if i enjoy these books which i hope i will i will read the other ones by them and the goal of this is basically to get around clearing my tbr make sure i read the authors that I want to read and hopefully find some new authors that might become my favourites. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. It helps me out massively. Um, let me know if you've got any similar reading challenges, like if there's particular, even if it's not like an official challenge that you're setting for yourself, let me know if there's an author that's been on your TBR for ages and you haven't read any of their books or if there's an author you're determined to read more of um, and you haven't got round to because I've got a couple of those as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.